So this week I'll be ministering to us on one question. God sometimes speak to the church, speaks to the church through questions. If you go to the book of Malachi, there are very many questions. It's like almost every couple of verses, another question. A couple of verses, another question. And does not give answers. But there are certain questions if you ask, if you ask, you know, if you hear them, you can almost tell the answer. You know, you answer yourself even without, uh, you know, much thinking. Let's read. Uh, you know, if it was long ago in the village, I would have, I would have just told you, uh, you know, you know, the, the, the page number, you, you know. Uh, you remember how, oh God almighty, how things have changed, you know. You, you know, just go to page, you know, page what? This one is page what? You know, uh, this one even does not have a page. These Bibles have changed. This is no page. Oh my God, my Bible has no page. No, no, it has. 1147. All right. <laughs> Let's go to the book of Jonah. Jonah, not John. Because I know some of you may confuse Jonah with John. It's Jonah, chapter 1. We're going to read verse 1. Uh, it's an amazing short book, four chapters. And uh, let's see what the Holy Spirit is saying. So, Father, just help me to ask the question to the people in the lunch hour this week in Jesus' name. Now, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, uh, the son of Amittai, saying, what is the word saying? Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose, what did he do? He fled to Talshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going down to Talshish, so he paid the fare. Hmm. And went down into it and to go with them to Talshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners or mariners were afraid. And every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the Lord. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had laid down and was fast asleep. Oh my Jesus, the guy was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said, what do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God, as we are calling on our gods. You call on yours. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, come let us cast lots that we may know uh, for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. <laughs> then they said to him, please tell us. For whose cause is this trouble upon us? And what is your occupation? And where do you come from? And where is your country? And what people are you? So he said to them, I'm a Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea, this one which is troubling you, and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid. They said to him, why, what, why have you done this for the man knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. And then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea uh, was growing more tempestuous. And he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea that the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rolled hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempest, uh, tempestuous against them. Then they cried to the Lord, cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with, uh, with innocent blood. For you, O Lord, 
have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish. How many days? Three days and three nights. So the Holy Spirit asked me to ask the church in the lunch hour. Because we have three churches in this hall. We have the morning glory church. We have the lunch hour church. And we have the live church on Sunday. So, okay. I know you're in Metupa. This is what the Lord is asking. Are you Jonah? So write down. Am I Jonah? Yeah. It looks Jonah found his way in the lunch hour. It could be your neighbor. Wow. You know, I wish sometime we preach what we want. It will be easy because I have 250 GB on this iPad of messages. That's huge. And I would just chomoa one, you know, and print out, even give you each one of you a copy. And then we go page by page, you know. But when the Lord is asking, are you Jonah? It made me think. In fact, I began rereading the book of Jonah. Pastor Mutiso, are you Jonah? You think you are Jonah. Yeah. Check the ID of your neighbor. Are you Jonah? Is a Jonah? <laughs> All right. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus have mercy. So, I literally even did not know what to do with this Jonah question. Because I think the easiest thing is throw Jonah into the water. You know, maybe we cast lots and find out why are you lost. So I want you to hear the word of God as we continue step by step. And it's my prayer that you make up your mind. You will return to the presence of God. And you'll agree that what he sent you to do and where he sent you to go, you will go. And now I just remembered something I had not remembered before. There's a man of God. Uh, I hope he's not watching this. But anyway, I'll not mention his name. Uh, because pastors... We were taught in Bible school in counseling that people's stories are not public stories. But if they are stories from Morocco, then it's okay because, again, they are not from Morocco. So this man sat somewhere with a pastor, and uh, there were many challenges, many difficulties in their, in their life and provisions and, and, and so forth, and uh, not able to take care of this and that for a couple of years, not finding a job, not finding, and you know, in the city, and s somebody with a lot of education, a lot of experience, you know, worked greatly in huge companies, uh, but the wife is ministering and also working, but the man is a little bit stuck. So they came to me and asked, please, uh, man of God, can you do spiritual Googling and find out what can we do because we are stuck in our life and in our family? And so we were seated there, and then I began to listen to the story. And the Holy Spirit told me, this is Jonah. I told him, brother. <laughs> so, so the Jonah guy, so I'm so privileged to greet Jonah. Karazoya. You know, I greeted who? <laughs> and then I began to explain to him, uh, in fact, this is one of the easiest messages because Jonah, every time you hear Jonah, you know what Jonah did, don't you know? That he paid fair, and that's why we read a whole chapter, and he went to another direction other than where God was sending him. And so I told him, brother, I think what you've been trying to do a couple of years is not what you're supposed to do. You need to go back to work. You need to find a job and work together with your wife and it shall be well in this and that. And he told me, then the, the wife said, you, you, know, you know, the wives, our wives are usually very sharp. Eh? They're usually like the second Holy Spirit. You know, we men, please, let me advise you men. If your wife keeps on telling you something, you better hear. 
I tell you the truth. They are very accurate. I don't know what happened. I, I wish we were given the same level of uh, understanding like you ladies, you know. And uh, it's powerful, especially when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are properly saved and you are not a manipulator. You are a stable woman and mature in the Lord. You can do wonders. But you can be very dangerous if the devil enters you. Okay, sorry. Amen. You know, okay. Because you know too much. And so, the wife said to the husband, I told you, man of God, I told him he is Jonah. And now you have confirmed. <laughs> I said, brother, now let's get you back on your way to Nineveh. And so we prayed. I said, I, I canceled him. And then we prayed. And guess what? For three years, I think two years, not having no job. As soon as I prayed with him and he agreed to go back to work, though he had gotten stuck, the following week he got a job. I hear such a big job more than all the jobs he has ever done in his life. As soon as you greet Jonah, Matura Yada, things that you have been struggling with will begin to align themselves. So I come with the same grace today. May our lives begin to be aligned so that we can be where we are supposed to be to the glory of God. Amen? But some intro. Jonah was a prophet. Don't criticize Jonah. Jonah was a prophet. And when you find a man of God, don't speak against him. The other day a preacher told us that uh, he was preaching a lot against King Saul. Saying David is the man whom God loved. King Saul was a bad man. He represents walking in the flesh. And you know all the good messages we have had on, in, in, uh, you know, on Sundays. The King Saul, he, 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 you know, and you say all manner of things against him. Then the Holy Spirit told him, stop preaching against Saul. Because even David could not speak against him. Who are you to speak against King Saul? I was surprised. So I'm very careful with Jonah. Because he was a prophet. And, but, of course, we also learn from the mistakes of uh, God's people. And from the successes of God's people. And uh, pitfalls. There's a book I, I was reading. I mean, I, 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 I was, did I buy? I think I bought a package of three. And then one of them was pitfalls of the prophetic. The other one, I think, was something else. So I gave the package to a certain preaching couple, you know, because I think the problems were going through, I think they needed the books. Later, I asked for the books. They refused to return the books. They refused completely. I don't know why. I don't know what I can do. When a man of God refuses with your books, I don't know what you can do. And you know you can't, you can't cast. No, I'm serious. I can't turn a vitabo. So, I don't know if pit force. See and one of the pitfalls, as the man of God was teaching on the pitfalls of ministry and ministers, he used Jonah as an example. And uh, so at least I did not have the privilege to read those writings of that man of God. I would have added you five more points, you know, from that book. But I did not have it. <laughs> but listen, Jonah was a prophet. He is a man who hears God. When God told him, arise... And go to Nineveh. He did not confirm. You know many of us today. When we hear something from God. We say let me first of all confirm. Yeah let me confirm it. I'm waiting for confirmation. I want to encourage you. Last week Pastor Mark preached. Very prophetic stuff. From the carpenters. You know in chapter 1 of uh, Zechariah. I don't know which chapter he reached. You know there are 12 chapters. Alifika Wapi? Chapter? Chapter 4. Not by might or power. All right, he still has more probably chapter 5. And there are many prophetic things he said. You don't need confirmation. God has already spoken. The challenge of Jonah is not hearing from God. Some of us, our challenges, we are not even sure whether God has spoken. So let's help you to build your capacity to hear from God. Hallelujah. But Jonah... The main point is this. Jonah hears from God and Jonah knows what he should do and he doesn't do it. Hmm. Now, before I comment on Jonah, let me first of all take you to Matthew 21 and see two men here. 
because so, today Monday we're just introducing. Go to uh, Matthew 21, verse what? 28. And look at this parable that Jesus gave. But what do you think? A man had two sons. And he came to the first and said to him, Son, go, work today in my vineyard. Okay, let's see what happened with his son. And he answered and said, I will not. Okay. I will not. Some of you have already told God, I will not. Natumepatana. May God have mercy on you. Otherwise, a big fish is on the way. The fish, that whale, which is in the seas, is tracing its way on the same line that the boat is. So that by the time they have cast lots and they have results, and now they have decided they are throwing you out. The fish will be there. It will have arrived. You keep on saying no to the Lord. But afterward, he regretted it and went. Oh, praise the Lord. At least, uh, at least, at least. Some of you will now regret that you refused to do what God was asking you. And you are going now to agree to come back and do what God wanted. But there was another son. Look at the other son. Then he came to the second son and said likewise. What was the instruction? Son, go work, go today, work in my vineyard. But this son answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Some of you are smiling because you have also two sons. <laughs> and you keep sending them. And you can almost tell which son is the son number one in your house and which son is son number two. Because some of them, they tell you, I'm going. When you come back in the evening, son, did you uh, give the chicken the, because some of you keep chicken, did you give that dose I left? Oh, father, uh, sorry, I forgot. Next time you should tell him, I found a son like you in the Bible. Which of these two did the will of his father? They said to him the first. Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, the tax collectors and harlots, these are some of the greatest sinners in Israel those days. Enter the kingdom of God before you. Why? 32. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots, they believed him. And when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe. In other words, the worst sinners in the community, when they hear instructions from God, and when they hear the message, when they hear the prophetic word, when they hear the call, they humble themselves, they repent, they turn and change, and they agree with God. But those of the kingdom, they are like those sons, especially the son who said, uh, I will go, but he never went. But at least this other one who said, I will not go, but then he thought, no, it is my father. I need to be obedient to him. He is higher and stronger than I. I am supposed to be accountable. And the young man later decided, I will do what God said I do. Praise the Lord. And many of us in the lunch are when God is asking, are you Jonah? You need now to begin to retrace your steps and find out did God tell you something and you never did it? This is my first point. Because Jonah heard and was able to decode, was able to interpret, was able to know the mind of God. You, Jonah, do you in the first place know how God speaks to you? And so prophetic God is important for every child of God to know how God speaks to you. So that you don't find yourself that actually God spoke to you, you even never understood. List this down. Number one, God speaks through the word, the word of God. Directly, the Bible says what it says. It means what it means and means what it says. The word of God is an open message from God. 
The word of God is the standard by which we measure everything else. If you want to hear from God, train your ear, train your heart to meditate on the word of God you are reading so that the word can sharpen your mind, prepare your heart, move your spirit, move your heart to come to a place you are able to hear from God. And if you train yourself in serious study of the word, Every day I assure you, you will be hearing from God through the direct word of God. We have been a little bit casual in how we handle scripture. We tend to think some special man of God somewhere should interpret scriptures for me. But I have good news for you. You are now that special man and you will know the mind of God. Hallelujah. Number two, God speaks to us by releasing a small still voice in our spirit it's not loud you can't hear it from outside but inside of you you have heard something which you did not know before god still speaks in a small still voice i know people have abandoned other methods of god speaking because they want to rely on this still small voice but praise god he still speaks in a small still voice. And the Bible says, be still and know. Psalms 46 and verse 10. When it says the instruction, be still. If you want to hear a still small voice, you need to calm down. You need to reduce the noise. You need to take a moment in a quiet place. Maybe in your room, private room. And just take quiet in the presence of God. And tell the Lord, I'm here waiting on you. I want to know, what do I do with this situation? What do I do with so and so? You see, as a leader, I have to keep hearing from God. I have to ask God, what do I do? And sometimes God is amazing. He decides I'm not going to say something to you in a hurry. So that you can ask me a little bit more. Because God wants to spend more time with you. Because he knows as soon as you hear, you disappear. So if you say, I'm going to fast three days, I'm going to stay and I'm going to take a retreat, he'll speak to you the last day. Because he knows if he speaks to you the first day. <laughs> anyway, but one time God spoke to me the first day. I went to pray and as soon as I entered the room, I knelt facing the wall, bang, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and it changed everything else. So he speaks in a small still voice. Number three, God still speaks in an audible voice. Audible voice. Don't be lied to that God is not speaking. When he wrote the Bible and finished writing, he did not become dumb. He still speaks in a loud voice. One time I was praying in Aboretum. You all know Aboretum, don't you? And I was walking around praying on one of the little bushes there, calling on God. Because there was a crisis. Uh, one of my friends was a leader. The wife had miscarried five times. And uh, it was now difficult. They were not getting a baby. And it was very painful for this woman. Because they tried every medical thing they could. And there was no answer. And uh, so I felt, I think... If, as a senior pastor, I also can't help. I think we are all doomed. Because this is something that needs divine intervention. So I decided I'm going to take a day and go and pray. And I was walking on the woods, praying and asking God, do something for this woman. Because she had just called me a day before and said, she's pregnant again and she doesn't know what to do. She's not even sure the husband should know. I mean, she's frustrated and it, they have given up. So I went to pray. And I was praying in the bush. The Holy Spirit spoke to me in an audible voice. I turned. And he asked me a question. Do you want to get involved in this deliverance? That's how he put it. Do you want to get involved in this deliverance? I answered back the voice. I said, Lord, there's nothing you ask me. And I said, no. In other words, I'm ready. So I came back. Anyway, leave that story. But anyway, it's not good to leave it hanging because... You need to know what happened. How many of you are saying, please finish the story? <laughs> Pastor Gigi we, was there, was involved. So we came and gathered Pastor Gigi and myself and uh, another couple and my wife. And we, we said, why don't we pray for nine months, once a week, praying and fasting until this baby is born? We decided to stand in the gap before God. But this is what happened. The first day we fasted, 
It was a Tuesday. Then we met at 5 o'clock, 5.30 to pray in our office. Asking God, you know, that Lord, we have begun this journey for nine months. When we finished the prayer, I went home. Then the Lord took me in a dream journey. Me, I dream a lot. I know many of you don't dream nothing, but I'll pray for you this week. You'll begin dreaming until you tell me, man of God, punguza ivi tulireta sirali. Reduce. Because it's an anointing. So the Lord took me on a journey and took me back to the home of this woman and saw her parents and saw uh, the home there and I saw blood poured there, blood poured there, blood poured there, blood poured there. And then the Lord showed me the woman seated at the clinic, at the bed, waiting to see a doctor. And then a friend of mine, man of God, showed up in the dream and said to her, it is time for your miracle. And she opened her arm seated and she was enjoying it as she received. And then a light flashed from the man of God and hit her. Then I woke up. So two things from that dream. One, the reason why there was no baby was because there were claims in the family that were asking for blood. And every time she was pregnant, the baby had to go because the blood was never enough. You need to understand a lot of things in the spirit. Don't take things casually. But the good news was the story was to end this way. Because one of the things you discover in dreams, if you are walking with God, you should not even lose in your dream. And I've said that many times. You should wake up being a winner. So, I knew it was time for her miracle. So when we met, I shared the following day or so. And I shared with them, this is what the Lord has said. This is what is going to happen. And we stood in and said, Lord, all this claim of blood. Who is this? Who did what where? What sacrifice happened where? And I said in the name of Jesus, it's for this reason that Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood. And therefore, any other claim can be answered. We stood there and said, Father, we come in by the blood of the Lamb and we say in Jesus' name, that iniquity in that family, that sin in that family is now forgiven and we declare the blood of Jesus has brought mercy and it's over, no more claim. And then we brought authority. We said, altar split, be quiet, be silent. We destroy that claim, no more coming into this home. And then we turned to the woman. We said, now you are blessed. This baby will be born. There will be no more miscarriage. This is your beginning. Kazaraha. We never prayed for nine months. It was not necessary. It, did we? We didn't. We just met another week. We thanked God and it was over. The good news is that baby was born. And I think he's in high school now. And another baby was born. Then they said we don't want more babies. Otherwise, we are ready to continue. Oh, she's in the university right now. Oh my God. Which university? This one, Nairobi University. Jesus of Nazareth. I should go to preach there. And wave at her. And then she waved me back. Hey, how do you think I'll be feeling? You can hear from God concerning any matter. I have said this before. I know we are very scared of men of God who hear God. Or not just scared. We are very happy. We feel, oh my God, man of God, tell me something. I meet those kind of people. You say, man of God, you hear a lot. So you hear something from me. <laughs> now, this is what we are doing. We are now devolving the ability to hear. Huko mashinani. You shall hear God for yourself. <laughs> Glory to God. So, number one, the word of God. Number two, small steel voice. Number three, what? An audible voice. <laughs> uh, in the 80s, there's a man we preached with shortly called Mike Ngari. He was praying somewhere in Mbere in the bush. And then he heard a voice. Mike Ngari. I give you the ministry. So he always used to tell us, oh, I heard God loudly call my full names. Oh, I wish, I, wish, I mean, it's very sweet if God can call you by his full names. Uh, eh, praise the Lord. I mean, it's just amazing. But he doesn't have to call you by your full names. Blessed is he who believes before they can see. 
Number four, God, because Jonah had his word. You also must hear your word. Number four, God speaks through revelations. Now, revelations is a compounded word. It's a big word. But he speaks to us through revelations. And these revelations can be broken down in several dimensions. The first one is revelation through an open vision. Open vision. I pray that as you're hearing me, you can see beyond this physical sight and you see in the spirit and God shows you an open vision. Hallelujah. Peter was in Acts chapter 10 in the house of one called Simon of Tana and he was in the rooftop praying over lunchtime waiting for lunch. What a way to wait for lunch. It was a rooftop. Next time you're waiting for lunch, you come to the lunch hour. Praise God. And then he saw a vision, an open vision. He saw a sheet, you know, like a shuka sheet with four-footed beasts laid on it. And the Holy Spirit said, or in the dream, the voice told him, rise, kill and eat. And then Peter says, no, Lord, I don't eat anything unclean, you know, anything common. Then the, it happened three times. And the voice told him, don't call anything I've cleansed and call it common. And later, when the open vision was over, Peter was wondering, what does that mean? Listen, any time you have a revelation or you even have a dream and you come to a place of asking, Lord, what does this mean? You wait for the voice of the Spirit to tell you what it means. And Peter was told, behold, three men are looking for you. Go down, three men are looking for you. And indeed, on the other end, Cornelius had heard from God that, hey, your offering and your arms and your prayers have come up to God as a memorial. And God has sent an angel and told him, send for one Peter in the house of Simon. And then Peter has gotten his download. Cornelius has his own download. And God is doing the divine connection between Cornelius and Peter. My God, may you also have a divine connection organized from heaven. Your Peter is being spoken to by God. Cornelius is hearing from God. And both of them meet. Hallelujah. And you will enjoy your Christianity. Because God from heaven is doing the divine connections. Glory to God. So he was wondering what does it mean. So when you get a revelation there is that moment of wonder. And your wonder can stay for a week or two. Depending on how much time you have to dig in in the presence of God. Open vision. Well, one professor, of course, told us one time in a seminar. He said, you men of God, your problem with your preaching is this. You always give us examples of dead men. Moses, Joseph, very old people. And he said, are there no current examples? <laughs> and he, that's why, that's, from that day, I respected education. I respected professors because I never thought like that. So that was Peter. And anyway, do you know Simon of Tana? Even this Peter, we hear he was Pope. Sometimes he's not Pope. You know, so, you know, so are there no current examples of open visions? And many of you sometimes have had open visions. But then you say, something told me. Don't call the Holy Spirit something. One time we were planting a church in Chicago. Sorry, Chicago. Uh, in Berlin. And I was on the pulpit preaching, 2003. And then all of a sudden, in front of me was a huge banner written. These words. Into Europe with passion. Hey. So I paused from preaching. I said, I've just seen something in the spirit. And now I know God is calling me into Europe. With this passion of God that I got. I told them we are in the middle of somewhere. I will not call it nowhere because there was no tarmac road. The dust was too much. The place is down. I tell you, I said from this down place, God is giving me a mission into Europe. Wow. And I tell you, after all those years, God has given us impact in Europe. Blessed be Jesus. Until my wife has received an invitation to preach in a huge women conference in The Hague this year. As a follow-up of that, go ahead and clap your hands. As a follow-up of that open vision, praise God. May God open your eyes and cause you to see, amen? 
Oh, so time is over. I had not even looked at the clock. Thank you, you two people, for letting me know that time is over. Me, I was thinking it's a conference I was teaching yesterday. You know, in, in Roiro, we just flow. When the engine is flowing and the engine is on, you move from one dimension to another. So, and a revelation is open vision, right? Number two, dreams, 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 dreams. As a revelation, praise God. So, Jonah, so uh, are you Jonah? Are you Jonah? Jonah had arise and go to Nineveh. So, by the way, hearing God is not the main issue. This is the last statement I make. Hearing God is not the main issue. The main issue is, what do you do with what you have heard? And what the Lord is saying is that many of you have heard things, but you haven't done what God said, and so you are Jonah. This week, you are being arrested. Even if God uses a fish, you are going to be taken back to Nineveh. Okay, I know you're in Gumu. It's very difficult to accept. Uh, so can, we, can I retract the statement? No. God by fire, by thunder, must place you where you are supposed to be. Can we agree? Yeah, no apologies. God must, because he loves you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because did Jonah apply to be a prophet? No, it's the Holy Ghost that came upon him and he discovered he's a prophet. Did you apply to be what you are? No, it's circumstances that have been coming together until you find yourself where you are. But the Lord has mercy through Christ Jesus. It shall be well with you when you obey the Lord. We'll pick it up tomorrow.